Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. I'm here to give you a little bit of a status update on my budget mech paladin. I've been building these budget decks for the post buffs meta and mech paladin is an archetype that I have revisited a few times over the past week and a half. I just made some adjustments, played the deck again, being very disappointed, made more adjustments, played the deck again, being very disappointed. But this time I got something going a little bit, so I figured I would make a video of this version. The full cost version of Mech Paladin is known for its incredible swings. Because it runs stuff like Galvanizer, so cost of mechs is going to be lower. Then it runs stuff like Call to Adventure, so you can draw some mechs and give them some buffs. And then the full cost version has stuff like Kangor's Endless Army, Glowstone Technician, Ziliax. So it can buff the minions in hand. It can play them out for cheap, magnetize huge mechs, it can re-summon those huge magnetized mechs. Just a lot of good swing turns and a lot of value. But unfortunately, on a budget, without Ziliax, without Glowstone Technician, without Kangor's Endless Army, that approach just doesn't work. So I originally started with the Mechano Eggs, with the Mechanical Whelps, these cards that just give you a lot of value, a lot of big mechs, but it doesn't work. I could not make it work. And this build, I played 18 games with this build, I went 9 and 9, so for exactly 50% win rate, which obviously is not good enough. I still need to figure out something to make this better, and I have a couple of ideas based on those games. If I can find anything really, then I'll make another video. But I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on where budget make Paladin stands, and where it stands is that in the current meta, you can't afford to run Mechano Eggs. You can't afford to run Mechanical Whelps. The first time I started winning games with the Saga Dives was when I cut that late game value and I added more cards for Tempo, Whirly Gliders, Upgradable Framebot, a couple of Blessings of Might even. Blessing of Might, Framebot, mm, you can see where this is going. Just getting stuff out earlier, trying to finish the games faster. Unfortunately, I don't see any alternative for a budget version at the moment. And one of the absolute key pieces for a budget deck right now. Two copies of Spellbreaker. Yeah, silence effect. Silence just wins games. If your opponents magnetize big minions and you can hit them with the silence, that can provide you with the swing that you can win the game with. You don't have a Kangor swing, you don't have a Ziliac swing, but you can have a silence swing. Other than that, it's Mech Paladin, it does the crazy Galvanizer stuff, it just does it early. As early as you can, Galvanizer, then Magnetize stuff, build big things, hit opponent in the face, use your buffs, Blessing of Might, Blessing of Kings, these sorts of cards that are not part of the regular Mech Paladin, so that you can hit face faster, earlier, and hope that it's enough, because you don't have the value for the very late game. That's just the way it goes. Unlike Hunter, Paladin doesn't have hard removal. You don't have Venomizers, you don't have Spider Bombs. So, removal can be a bit tricky. I mean, Silence obviously helps. But other than Silence, it's just Skaterbot on something. And Skaterbot on something is not bad. It's typically pretty good. At the very least, it's all that Paladin has available. So that's the current status of budget mech Paladin. I have a couple of ideas that I can try to improve this deck with. If they work out, I will make another video. But already at this point, I can tell that Tempo, Tempo is the only solution. Value with whelps with eggs. Not available on a budget, sorry. If you enjoy this content, then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now, let's go take a look at Budget Mech Paladin in action. I kind of like that curve. I don't have a one drop, obviously. Would be nice to have one drop, but... I can try with this. It should be pretty difficult for Rogue to answer the exploding nature. So, let's go. Rogue kept three cards, so... There is some power definitely in play. From the Rogue as well. Mm, a size seven agent. Okay, that's not bad. And he might have an answer to this one too. 
something to kill the tree to assassinate seven agent trades away the zero to something like that maybe something like that Ooh, a replicating menace that's interesting because I could magnetize the replicating menace but then I would have a board full of one ones but I can choose between a board full of one ones or what this can be this becomes five seven so that it would have four health I think I go for the board full of one once against Rogue. Let's see how that works out. I'll take the trades. I'll create the board of one once. He needs to have fan. Hi Pyro. Okay. Hi JC. Ooh, Spirit of the Shark. That is scary stuff. That is truly scary stuff. How do I respond to that? He's going to get a little ton of shark value. I obviously have nothing that can remove it right here. I can do War Gear Glotron. I can do Explodinate. I can't really do Explodinate to Verdict Glider. I guess it's War Gear and Glotron. I guess this is what we do, and then we hit the face with everything we've got. And then we'll see if that's going to be enough or not. Let's see. Now. Rogue should have some pretty good stuff. That's two lackeys. So he has one paladin card. Got a pair of lackeys here. And that shadow step isn't too strong. He needs something more. Well, now with four lackeys. Then the dead win just. Does the dead win kill me next turn? I mean, I have nine. I need another eight. But I don't have another eight here. So what do I have? Should I? If I kill the spirit of the shark, this can push 15. Does he have another 15 from hand? That's relatively unlikely. If I do Explodinator frame bot. Put him down to 11. I think something like that is what I need to do here. Explodinator. Frame bot. Trade the shark spirit away. Push 6 to the face. He needs 15 from hand to kill me. And there's also quite a few minions on the board. But maybe not enough to kill him next turn. We'll see. Hi, Raul. Well, sea giants. Okay. But then what? Sapping a bomb. No, sapping, so, sapping a 6 6, of course. So maybe I don't have. Maybe I don't have 11 damage for next turn. Right now it looks like I don't. So he's goes, he goes all face. Yeah, I might lose this. Yeah, I don't have 11 damage. I have 2 plus 7. I have 9 damage. Not quite enough, so I did end up losing this game. Yeah, that's 9 damage. Well, sometimes happens. Let's see. Does he have... Oh, it's a mech, mech variant. Okay. I believe I need to play the Crystology first. Interesting. So I could coin the Glowtron. To start fighting against this. I think I probably need to do that. Because I can't let him have too much tempo advantage over me. A double call to adventure draws miserable. Yeah, too bad that I couldn't find more mix to more mix to discount. I need to try to think very carefully about how to proceed with this. I probably need to play one galvanizer here. And kill off one of the minions. Leaves me a pair of one twos on the board. 
but gives you the ability to do like frame bot gatekeeper type of things. Okay. But three mana he can't really magnetize well yet. Need to get those go to adventures out at some point. He could have swipes, but I do kind of like a toot and taunt. So I guess I will build the toot and taunt for me now. What is my Like this. And trade away the one once. Now, he has the availability to play like replicating menace, or he could swipe. Well, swipe kills the one once from me, but it doesn't really affect the 2 10. Not yet, anyway. It's unlikely for that deck to have silence effects. Okay, some kind of a buff. Yeah. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Alright. So, I could play Call to Adventure, which will draw either Glowtron or Skadebot as a 3-3. Tree, tree. Then I can do Galvanizer, Skadebot type of play. Glowtron as a 3-5. Yeah, let's Call to Adventure here. Glowtron, please. There's my 3-5 Glowtron. Then I can play my 1-mana Galvanizer which will discount the others, so that I can Glowtron over here, which in turn allows me to kill off his 4-4 four, four minion. Now, I'll be able to use Skadabot if desired. Now I will be able to use Skadabot over here, which will allow me to kill off his 2-2. Two, two. Then I can use my big minion, and this small minion to leave him with only one minion on the board at the moment. And I still have a 2-8 taunt on the way. And swipe does not clear this board. Okay. Go. Fair enough, fair enough. Some microtech controlling. This is now guaranteed to draw a 3-3 Skadabot. Which is not quite ideal, but I have the ability to kill off all the mechs if I like. I think I do like. Now let's kill off all the mechs here. Leave just a 2-1. Trade here. Trade here. Trade here. Use Anoya module on that. So that we'll have the Divine Shield and use Hero Power. He could use Swipe now on the frame, but... So there is the risk of Swipe. For the time being. I would also need to switch gears to dealing face damage in the near future. Whispering Woods doesn't do much. There's no mechs to magnetize on. Buffs don't do much at the moment. Should he have any buff cards? Swipe would be the best card he could have. He could be running stuff like Forest Sade, Ziliax, Snip Snap. Snip Snap would still be solid. Mm, is he planning to swipe? Now I don't know what his plan is. But I do know that this one will be used to trade away his minion. Why leave a 5 attack, 5 health minion, without, even without divine shield for me? I do not understand. I go with replicating menace here. Hero power, and I will push 11 damage to the face. We're still one turn away from forest state becoming a thing. He cannot double swipe yet, because he's at 7 mana. This is a guaranteed 3-3 three, three Skadebot. Well, this just means that he's giving up then. I'm fine, I mean I'm fine with him giving up. Big taunts sometimes get the job done. 
obviously I would like like it to be able to do better than 50%, but because it shouldn't be possible to reach 50% with this archetype, then I suppose I should be fairly happy. Mech Hunter A. Eh? This is going to be tricky. Funky Monkeys raiding. Welcome. We're playing some budget mech paladin. An archetype that shouldn't work at all, but we're at 50% so far, so doing pretty well. Do you think Res Priest worth playing now? Probably not, no. I think I can just go in with the Glowtron. I was contemplating coining the upgradable frame, but because then I could magnetize the Glowtron on it if needed. Well, neither way would have worked, it seems. So that's pretty annoying because it's poisonous. I probably have to coin the Cold to Adventure and hope that I can hit my Skade about from this. Because at 3 mana he might not be able to magnetize more stuff on that and then I can just trade that away with a skate about. That seems like the best chance I have at the moment to be able to deal with that. Obviously I'm pretty far behind at the moment. So even though I can kill this and remove the poisonous. He probably has something to magnetize on these, they can kill the upgradable frame, but he can kill a whirly glider on board. Well, this mandates some magnetization. Yeah, well, I mean, budget mech paladin is unplayable because it doesn't have Kangors or Ciliacs, but I've been trying to get this to work for a long time. Okay, Christology time. Is there something I can do with the galvanizer here? Galvanizer, Clotron Skatebot. Ah, I think it just feels pretty bad. Everything I, think I can do seems pretty weak. What can you do? I can do Clotron Skatebot. I can trade away that mech and I can trade away this mech, but this probably just isn't enough. So like Agro Mech Pally without Silly. Well, no one is playing Agro Mech Pally. It's such an archetype doesn't really exist. But in some ways, I suppose. Yeah, Valley Trading is a good choice. He just has so much stuff here. If he has any more hard removal, I'm just dead. He has 9 on board. It's really hard for me to even race. But raising is the only option I have. So I will have to try to race, but I don't think it's possible from this position. Well, that was a pretty weak game, but that happens sometimes. Any piece of hard removal is obviously an immediate win, but um, then again, that target type is incredibly favored against Mech Paladin anyway, regardless of the Mech Paladin variant, because of the sheer amount of hard removal. I had a lot of trouble with the Venomizer. I mean, I'm hoping to maybe do something with the Spellbreaker. He trades everything to kill. Oh boy. Well, if you insist on giving me a chance, I am willing to consider your suggestion. Okay. I mean, we're going to try. Cheap mechs coming right up. Well, I have a spellbreaker, so as long as the mech is not Ziliax, I can at least reduce the Im impact of other mechs. What is my purpose? We're still looking like we're in a race position here. I want to activate my bombs. Yeah, let's go. I'm going all face here because I don't have much else to do here. Maybe he just completely whiffs, but he got two Ursa turns, which means two additional resources. That should always be enough. And there's still two Spider Bombs and a Venomizer in the deck. And should he find any of those three, that probably means just a win. Ooh, I what this does. That was a good top deck. 
Now we just need to trade away the galvanizer to make board space. But that's a simple task. Then... Ah, uh, he did find the Ziliax exactly. Well, that probably wins the game because I don't think I can... Whoa. Well, three, four, five, six. War gear wins the game. Seven, eight, eleven. If I push eight, he's still at twelve. He's still at ten. Do I accept that I lose to war gear and I lose to snip snap? I think I can't afford. I think I can't accept that. I probably do need to trade. I probably do need to take that one trade there. The rest goes face. Now he has three on board. So triple snip snap is nine. I'm not immediately dead to a triple snip snap. War gear is seven. So I'm not immediately dead to a war gear. Leroy Jenkins remained an out. Leroy or some other combination of multiple cards remained potential outs for him. Well, that one I couldn't help with. I could only play around Snip Snap out, War Gear out. Because I don't have that that strong of a play. And that's a problem really. This hand is also a problem really. Yeah, this is a major problem, really. Oh dear. Okay, so this was a loss. I mean, you can't win every time. I just couldn't get any good, any of the good cards. I guess Whirly Collider is kind of a good card, but it's not. It's not going to be enough for this, obviously. Next, he just used the one one to trade the Whirly Collider. My Heartstone. No, it's, it's just disconnect. Okay. Well, I have the ability to go, go in Snip Snap. But I don't have a follow up for that. So I think I have to just play the World Glider. Hmm. I wasn't dropping any frames from the broadcast, so. Yeah, this stuff is just something that I completely expected to happen. What about the Gatekeeper? Another tree attack on this, like replicating menace, and that kills the Gatekeeper. I would really need a silence to recover from this position. Snip snap isn't going to be enough. I think I still need to play the snip snap here. I don't think I have a better line. But I'm pretty reliant on top taking a silence from this position. Without that silence, just contesting this will not be easy. Well, there's the silence effect. Do I try to milk more? I think I need to try to milk more into the silence because I need to be able to kill the minion after the silence I suppose he might also play around it if I play the bronze gatekeeper I think that's okay let's do this we have a 3-8 taunt here I hope he magnetizes more stuff on that then I will silence that no that, that's not good enough actually that's not going to be good enough because I only have two one one stick and kill that. Sorry, that was that was not strong enough. Even with the silence now. Yeah, I should have done differently. Your magic shall not now I need to hit face, of course, with this because I, yeah, I didn't think that okay he's going to actually kill it, and then I don't have three damage. Should have toward toward it like that. Do I trade this? No, there's no real reason for me to do that. But there is a reason for me to trade the mech, right? Yes, I believe so. What if I use some call to adventures? No, I need the I need the death rattle. This one trades the mech. This one goes face. So he now has four. Four mechs with plus two, plus two. Does he have Skaterbots or Ziliacs? 
Right now he only has a Glowtron in the Resurrect pool, because everything else was magnetized on the Glowtron and that, that all went away in the silence. But I only have one silence left. Okay. Are there. There's a Mechano Egg. I'm fine with the Mechano Egg, right? I think I'm fine with the Mechano Egg. I don't have to use War Gear yet. A couple of minions into the Galvanizer. I might, just so that Galvanizer also goes into the Resurrect Pool. Let's go to Adventure. Pick up a Glowtron, nice. Let's go to Adventure again. No. If I have just two mechs on the board, it's unlikely that he kills them both. I use two mechs to trade that one away. I'll use Blessing of Kings on this one. I'll just push face damage here. Put him down to 12. Now, does he have a Ziliax? Ziliax is nice. Does he pick Anoya module? Alright. What else? Does he have more that he wants to magnetize on that? No, he don't wants to get the snips. Oh, that's really good actually, that snip snap now. A big snip snap too. And I would need to find a way to deal another 12 damage. So I can silence the taunt of course. This is 5. So I need another 7. And this is 6 for two mana, six mana. I can't do it. Unfortunately, I cannot do it. And if he has Ziliax, he wins. That feels bad. So if he has Ziliax, he wins. That's tough. But sometimes that's the way it goes. So I pushed at 11 and Ziliax wins the game. If there is a Ziliax, then that's a loss. That is not a Ziliax. That is not a Ziliax. That is not a Ziliax. Seven, yeah, that's a win. Whew. That game looked pretty desperate for a time there, but eventually it all came came together. Maybe I'll keep it. Let's see. Rogue, of course, can have sap. Sap can be nasty. This might be Poco Rogue. Well, that doesn't seem very likely. I mean, of course, anything is possible. But there aren't many Pogo Rogues, because Pogo Rogue is a bad deck. And people can't climb with Pogo Rogue, so maybe someone has changed Pogo Rogue, like on 2. That might be an explanation. I think I'm going for the coin upgradable frame, but then, then I'll magnetize a Glowtron over there. I think this looks fine. A couple of 5 health minions on the board. There's always the risk of sap. Okay. I'm cool with that, right? I think I'm cool with that. So I'll play the... What if there is a sap? If I play Replicating Menace on this one to kill the Miscreant, because I really don't want him to be bouncing the Miscreant and creating lots of lots of lackeys. And he saps this and plays like damage lackey and dagger on that. That would feel bad. I think we're going with that line. Trade that one away. This one goes face. And I've also played one Glowtron unmagnetized, just to have more minions on the board. So that he will have a 
more difficult time getting rid of them all. So that the scenario that I said about Zap and Lackey type of things doesn't clean up the whole board immediately. There's the 2 damage Lackey that I mentioned. Is there also the Zap? Not yet at least. Cool. I want to kill the Lackey and I want to hit him in the face. And I don't want to magnetize more stuff on this. I don't want to make it more attractive as a Zap target. I can just play an Anoia module on this board. That's fine. Unmagnetized. Trade that one away. Hit face with this. Not magnetizing too much. So that I do not become vulnerable. To saps. And try to maintain a good number of mechs on this board as well. Why... Oh. Wait, what? Okay. Well, that was interesting. So now he has the Waggle pick, and he might have like a pair of Corsairs or something. Waggle pick can kill this one, of course. I don't want to use my Skate about power yet. I'm just using this one to. Do I use this one to trade that away? What if he has like Fan? I will miss one damage if I use this one. I believe it's acceptable. I'll do that. I'm a little bit uncertain about this, because I was also considering Gatekeeper Skadebot, so that I could push two more to face, put him down to 13. So now there's Waggle Pick and a pair of Pirates. And the Pirates could be South Sea Deckhands, they could be Dread Corsairs. And here comes the Waggle. And are there Dread Corsairs? There are. There's also a Deckhand. Which is all fine. Does he have a Fan? Does he have a Sap? I'm scared about replicating Menace. Goodness. Then I could use Blessing of Might to push 8 to the face. Fan would be very powerful. We're still doing this. And I'm doing this. And I'm pushing the 8 damage to the face. Sap is scary still. At 7 mana. If he, if he has... Oh, he has Ciliax. Ciliax is incredibly good. But he can't bounce the Zilli. He can't attack with the weapon now. Because he can't bounce the Ciliax because he can't afford to replay it. Isn't that a bit of a problem, don't you think? I kill the Ciliax, he goes to 11. I have 6. I have 11. Let me take a look at that again. Bronze Gatekeeper here. Kill the Ciliax, he goes to 11. I have 6 plus 5, which is 11. Perfect. Kill the Ciliax. Magnetize more stuff. Kill the rogue. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.